All right, y'all. So I want to introduce you to uh, one of the channel builds that I'll be eventually be doing. We're starting pretty quick with the, some motor work. It's a 1982 Chevy uh, G20 van. I've had this for probably five or six years. Um, we bought it from my wife's aunt and uncle. Uh, they're both passed away now. Uh, bought it for 300 bucks. It's a pretty sweet little machine. A lot of you aren't into vans, so you just want to bypass this build series, but I drove a conversion van, one of these, in high school for a while. Shagging wagon. I love them, so vans seem to be getting a whole lot more popular here lately. So I'll give you a quick once over of it and tell you what my plans are for it. Structurally, she's in amazing shape with a few minor exceptions. Bottom of that sliding door got some rot. Some idiot crushed it in that spot on both sides, probably with the lift arms. It's got a huge freaking frame under there. Well, unibody frame. Don't know why you would put a lift arm right there on that pinch weld. Obviously didn't work well. Um, immediate plans. I'm planning on lowering it probably inch and a half in the back about the same in the front I've got some uh, like square body 80s um, wheels with the you know the trim rings and the little center caps they're at the sandblaster I'm probably gonna paint them silver and just go with a simple look see some old writing on it phone number and stuff for my wife's aunt and uncle's business A tiny ding in the bumper there. The bottom of this vehicle is immaculate. He was a Tulsa firefighter, so this will be staying. Pretty cool. I may try to reproduce it so it doesn't degrade. I've got a cricket machine. Might be able to scan it. Thing originally had electronic spark control. How fancy does that sound? His base model didn't have any trim, chrome stuff, other than bumpers. She's real straight. Uh, this is really, other than the rust on the other side, this here where they crushed it caused it to blow out. So I'm going to have to replace this outer rocker section. The inside is super solid. Give you a little upside, little upskirt shot there. There is not a lick of rot or anything else under here. It's super, super clean. Super solid base for a build. Has a, uh, an, a dirty but freshly overhauled uh, Turbo 350 before I bought it. So, really looking forward to this build. Nothing special under the hood. The AC actually does work, except for it leaks free on out at the compressor that's failed. I'll be going through all the brakes, cleaning up the wiring. I'll do most of it on the channel. Still has its, uh, thing on it shows all the options interior stuff originally had a 50 305 in it this is the interior my wife's uncle put this disgusting carpet in it it shows 70707 on the miles I would guess it's 170 or 270, who knows. This was just a base model cargo van. It's in decent shape. One thing I love about the G-Series vans is that 
once you pull that cover off, it's pretty easy. Super easy to get to the motor, as long as you're not working on exhaust manifold bolts. Um, I bought these seats for 50 bucks out of a conversion van that was getting junked at a yard. This thing had some ragged out gray seats, weren't original anyways. But my wife's uh, uncle made these custom speaker boxes, pretty fancy. Got paneling in it. One of my first steps is going to be to do a real good cleaning on this thing. You got shells built all the way down. There's trim rings, center caps for my new wheels. So what I don't know, what I haven't decided on yet, is what I'm going to do on the interior. I'm definitely taking this nasty carpet out. But I, I can't decide if I want to kind of leave this like it is with all the shelving intact. And uh, like use it just for a parts hauler type setup. Or if I want to go a different direction with it and kind of do more of like a 70s custom interior build type thing. With uh, seats and all kinds of fancy stuff. There's a lot of room. I have hauled dirt bikes and all kinds of parts. Uh, this comes in pretty handy with sandblasted parts because my shop that I use is 40 minutes from here. So I can put everything in here and not have to worry about getting rained on or whatever crap slinging up from the highway. But you can give me your opinion on what I should do here. Don't know. I'll, I'm going to either get correct blue seats for this or just have these recovered in blue. This thing originally had blue vinyl. You know, cheap bench seat looking, not bench seat, but it's high back, cheap bucket seats. Got a vintage 20 something year old CD player in it that doesn't really work. Some additional gauges thrown in the dash. Cruise works on it. I can't wait to get started with this build. It needs tires. Um, I'll go inside and show you a little bit more about what I'm going to do as far as the engine work goes. So this is what I bought for the van. Unless you've been uh, living on another planet for a while, it's an LS. This is not a 6.0 or a 5.3. This is a 2011 uh, 4.8 liter, the smaller of the LS motors. Um, this van, I'm not shooting for no high horsepower stuff. I just want a good, reliable driver that gets decent gas mileage. A friend of mine, family owns a uh, local wrecking yard and they uh, sold me this with the computer all the accessories except for the alternator, the ECM down here. Paid, uh, I think, 700 bucks for it. Power steering pump, power steering cooler, which I'll probably use since I got it. But I was pretty happy to get it. This motor is um, drive, drive by wire, obviously, but it's real clean. It's dry. Most of the LS motors you look at are leaking quite a bit of stuff, and this one's not leaking anything. So I'm debating on uh, putting some gaskets in it, maybe, and potentially a uh, cam swap just to give it a little bit more power. But in all likelihood, I'll just stab it like it is. I mean, if it's if it's assembled, not leaking. I mean, it's kind of stupid to tear it apart. So, in the van, you got pretty fair access. I mean, the engine, most of it will be sitting in the interior, so it wouldn't be that hard to get to. The only thing that's more of a challenge is getting to the accessories on the front, and that's really not that difficult on these LS motors. So, I could do a cam swap pretty easy with the front of the van ripped off the grill. So, 
I'll probably go ahead and keep this original style um, air compressor. Just buy some fittings, adapters for it. The air in the van in the van actually works, surprisingly. So, it's, and it's already 134 uh, refrigerant. So I'll just have some lines made on the van. The AC unit is like right here, and the condenser lines come straight over this way. The van stock small block Chevy compressor mounts way up here, and it's the big. Uh, a6 compressor the lines come off the back and it's a big mess so this will actually clean it up quite a bit the compressor being on the same side as uh, the evaporator box so I've been wanting to do this to that van for a long time so <clears throat> I forget what the mileage was on this I think it was like 140 so I'm real happy with it can't wait to get started on this project but I like all my other projects. This is the reason I can't drive it right now. 